Realty Income just announced that it's going to invest in some data centers and I've seen a lot of investors celebrate this recent news. Here are some examples of comments that I just read. Seems like a very attractive deal for Realty Income. How can anyone be upset when Realty Income is making smart business decisions? Realty Income is firing on all cylinders. Getting into the data center sector is exactly what I was looking for. Love it. Realty Income makes another smart move. And this last comment actually got 15 likes. But I actually don't like this deal and it has caused me to reduce my price target. And in today's video, I'm going to explain to you why. Hey everyone, this is Yulshi. I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about Realty Income latest investment. But before I get into it, could you please do me a huge favor and click the like button that really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for all your support. So there are basically three reasons why I don't like this deal. The first one is that there just isn't any spread for Realty Income. The going in cap rate is 6.9%, but Realty Income is today trading at an 8% FFO yield, and so there's no spread. Its average cost of capital is a bit lower once you include the debt, but in today's high interest rate environment, it really doesn't help much. And so it's concerning to me that Realty Income would make this investment knowing that its expected return is lower than its cost of equity. Given how discounted their stock has become, or much rather see them perhaps buy back some stock, I think it will send a clear signal to the market and perhaps even help their future cost of capital. But I fear that this latest transaction could have the opposite effect. Then the second reason why I don't really like this deal is because it's a higher risk investment and it reaffirms to the market that Realty Income is now going up the risk ladder. Historically, Realty Income has mostly focused on lower risk service oriented net lease property investments such as Dollar General convenience stores and Walmart grocery stores. These are relatively safe investments and Realty Income has done really well with those over the past decades. But now Realty Income, which is a net lease landlord, is going to invest in a data center development project. I personally don't really like data center investments because I fear that depreciation could be a real expense for these properties. The initial yields of such development projects are typically quite strong and that explains why REITs like Digital Realty have done so well in the past. But what I fear is that 20 years down the line, technologies may have evolved and today's data centers may not be as valuable anymore. I'm not saying that this is necessarily going to be the case, but it's a clear risk to consider here. I'm a lot more confident in the future value of a well-located Walmart Netlist property that we know is very productive, has done well for a long time. It's very likely to keep doing well over the coming decades and this property is likely going to grow in value. But unfortunately, I cannot say that with the same level of certainty when it comes to data center investments. And then the third and perhaps the most important reason why I don't like this deal is that Realty Income is getting too spread out. Historically, the market has rewarded REITs that were highly specialized with a premium valuation and on the flip side, it would punish REITs that were too spread out with a discounted valuation. The rationale here is that specialists would deserve a higher valuation because they would then develop significant competitive advantages that will also allow them to create greater shareholder value. On the other hand, jacks of all trades are more likely to do average at best and for this reason, most investors would rather avoid those REITs. This explains why REITs like WP Carey, Glassstone Commercial, or even Armada Hoffler have historically typically traded at lower valuations than the average of the REIT sector. Well, I'm telling you this because it appears that Realty Income is becoming one of those diversified REITs that lack a clear focus. One of the main reasons why Realty Income used to trade at a premium valuation is because it was highly specialized in one specific niche and had a great track record earning great returns in this specific niche. But this is now changing. Not long ago, Realty Income invested in vertical farming. It then invested in casinos. Now, more recently, it acquired Spirit Realty Capital, which is going to significantly expand its industrial property. And now it just announced that it's going to invest in data centers. And so here you may ask yourself, what's next? Is there a property sector that Realty Income wouldn't go into? You may also ask yourself, why is the management doing this in the first place? After all, they have a great track record. Wouldn't they know better? Well, I do think that the management of Realty Income is very competent, but they are in a difficult spot because the REIT has grown so large that there are not enough investment opportunities in their sector anymore. And so I'm sure they realize that stepping outside of their circle of competence has some risks, but they simply have no other options. They have to buy billions worth of properties every year to keep the ball rolling. And since they aren't able to find enough deals in the net lease sector, they're now investing in data centers, casinos, industrial properties, vertical farming, and so on. And so I take this latest deal as a red flag because it once more reaffirms that it's getting harder for realty income to grow. 
And then on top of that, it increases the risk that real income's market sentiment will suffer permanently from this as it becomes a diversified REIT. Therefore, I don't think that this latest deal is positive. In fact, I think it's negative and it warrants a small drop in our price target. So what's the takeaway here? Is real income still a buy? Is it a hold or has it become a sell? I think that despite all of this, real income is still a buy today. It's heavily discounted, it offers a high dividend yield and doesn't need to achieve much growth to reach high single digit or low double digit total returns. Therefore, if your goal is to maximize safe income, I think that real income remains a great pick in today's environment. However, this deal also reaffirms my belief that if your goal is to maximize total returns, then real income perhaps isn't your best choice in the REIT sector. For that, some of its close peers like Essential Properties Realty Trust, Vici Properties or even Agro Realty will probably do a better job. Now, if you want to access my entire Real Money REIT portfolio, feel free to join High Yield Landlord, which is my REIT newsletter for two week free trial. We're also offering a big Black Friday sale at the moment. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. And then finally, once more, if you could please click the like button, that really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for your support and see you at my next one. Bye bye.